In this video, I'm going to show you how to go from zero to $10,000 a month as a coder. I'm going to give you the exact step-by-step -step blueprint that you have to follow religiously if you want to make $10,000 a month or even more. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to show you the framework that's going to help you understand any kind of business because if you want to be extremely profitable and make a really good income for yourself, you need to stop thinking like an employee because most people in this world are employees and they think like employees. They want to be given chances. They want to have someone make their life easier and whatnot. And I get it till now. This used to be a viable option for most of us. But as you saw in the past couple of years, corporations and other businesses that are out there are not really in the business anymore of making your life as an employee as easy as possible. And what we are seeing right now is a transition from everyone going into a career for the next 40 years into having to become this type of person that can adapt and can make money on your own. So if you want to learn how to make money on your own you need to stop thinking like an employee from now on okay because this is the first step if you want to make things happen for yourself and i'm gonna be honest with you this transition from being an employee and having an employee mindset and outlook on life where most of the time you feel like a vit victim and whatnot is gonna be a very long and painful process but once you get on the other side and once you learn how to think correctly and be extremely responsible for your own situation then your life is going to change dramatically but let's just assume that you will be working on that maybe i'm going to make a video on that if you are interested let's assume that you are good with that side of your life and now you want to know how to make money essentially i want you to stop thinking of making money as a, an activity that outrages and i also want you to start thinking the most important thing that you can do is to solve problems probably you heard about this problem solving you need to find problems and you need to solve them and then you'll be rewarded if you create value then you'll be rewarded with money if you are not able to make 5 10 20 30 50 thousand a hundred thousand a month um, that means you're not solving problems big enough or you're not solving enough problems or you're not helping enough people with their problems that's the reason why you're not making the money that you want because this number it's an arbitrary number that i just picked to be honest you can replace this number with anything else you'll always be rewarded based on the value that you are pro providing to the world based on the size of the problems that you are solving when i was a barista i was making six pounds an hour 6.4 pounds an hour if i remember correctly but then at some point i got bumped to seven pounds an hour now the job i was doing was very difficult because it was very physical but in reality anyone can do that so then i was rewarded for the type of value that i was able to provide for the type of problems i was able to solve which were extremely small. When I became a software developer, the types of problems that I was able to solve were extremely different. Uh, not a lot of people were and are still not able to learn code to the level I was when I was a software developer. So then I was rewarded accordingly. Now that I teach other people how to make money with their coding skills, I teach them their coding skills and whatnot, I'm getting rewarded in a different way, okay? And then you can also go through the same process. You don't have to teach coding. I'm just explaining to you how different problems give you the opportunity to come up with solutions. And then when you come up with solutions, you are alleviating pain from a niche, from specific groups of people, and then you're getting paid. All we need to do is to first start with uh, a niche. Why do we need to start with a niche? The reason why I need to start with a niche is because you need to narrow down to a specific group of people, right? So a niche is a specific group of people and this specific group of people will have multiple problems, right? But what you want to do is to find a specific problem in a specific group of people and then solve it. Why? Because it's way easier to solve one problem for a specific group of people than to solve a hundred different problems for a hundred different types of people or niches because Right now you have 100 problems, 100 groups, 
100 times 100 is what? 10,000? You have 10,000 problems that you need to solve. And last time I checked, it's extremely difficult to solve 10,000 problems. Unless you are Jeff Bezos, but you do not have to be Jeff Bezos and you do not have to create Amazon to solve so many problems and probably not even Amazon, uh, Amazon is solving 10,000 problems. Okay, so you need to choose a niche. Now, there are some rules for choosing a niche and this list is not exhaustive. Maybe I'm going to make another video talking about what niche to choose, but essentially you want to have something called a big tab means total addressable market and it's a fancy way of saying enough people so let's say how many people do need toilet paper like pretty much everyone right if you really think about it so then this stamp is huge so then if i want to find people who need toilet paper it's going to be very easy for me to do so but if i need to find goth girls that listen to norwegian tech from 2010 because i want to sell them i don't know some ai SaaS for productivity well that tam is going to be extremely small i i hope i don't know i haven't checked that but i hope you can understand that the tam is important the total addressable market is important if i want to sell a product to developers well there are a lot of developers so i can advertise to those people and i can solve their problems if I want to find people that are interested in learning to code, well, the tab is pretty big. So this is kind of the first uh, thing that you need to do. And in your tab, you should have at least maybe 30,000 people. Okay. That's going to be making it for you quite easy to develop and sell a product for this specific niche. So that's one thing. Then your niche should be able to afford your services. I'm going to give you an example of what you shouldn't do so let's say uh, i have a service where i sell resumes for unemployed people well right now there are a lot of unemployed people i mean there's always a lot of unemployed people right but you might think that okay because the tam is pretty good there are a lot of unemployed people they are all willing to buy my stuff and that's where you're wrong because unemployed people do not have money to buy your stuff no matter how good or how needed your product is so your niche needs to be able to afford your services right that's why for example in my last video i said do not sell websites to charities to churches to barbershops because those types of businesses cannot or are not willing to afford buying something from you. One of the most important things, you should actually like working with that niche. So this is like me drawing a thumbs up. I hope it looks like that. I like the coding niche to a certain extent, so I can do something with it and I quite enjoy it. You know, I like talking to people, I like coaching people, I like uh, teaching different things. So I like this niche. The tab is pretty good and people can afford my service. There's no perfect niche. Every niche has a problem. No matter what you'll choose, you'll realize that this niche has these pros, but has these cons. I'm going to give you a very important piece of advice. Do not switch when things get hard. For example, if you are a coder right now, and let's say you finished a bootcamp and you did learn javascript you might find that oh it's quite difficult to find a job with javascript and that's because you are unskilled not because javascript is not good enough but then you find a guy on youtube that says hey you should learn python because python is really good for the future because you can do ai right so then the logical argument makes sense and then you start learning python and maybe build a few projects in python and then you realize that there is no way to move for, forward with Python and then you're getting stuck again. And then you research another influencer who says you should learn Java because Java is doing this and this. And then you switch to Java and then you repeat the process. And it's the same thing with the niches. There is no niche that is perfect, but you need to make sure that your niche is big enough, has money, and then you like it. And then the rest is up to you. Once you find this niche, uh, which shouldn't be that difficult, it should take you maybe a week or two of research to figure out what niche you want to work with. You need to figure out what problems a niche has because you'll go there and solve those problems. You know, what most people do wrong is that 
if they want to make a business, you know, as coders or whatever, they're waiting for an idea. You know, they are waiting for a magic idea to strike. Unfortunately, this is very unlikely to happen. I would say you have more chances to win the lottery than to just walk down the street and have an idea. Most of the time, and what most businesses are doing to find ideas is to study problems of a specific niche, okay? Because why would you wait for things to happen to you when you can go ahead, ask a bunch of people what their problems are, and then try to solve them. I'll give you an example from my business because I'm literally doing the same thing I'm showing you here. It's nothing that I'm coming up with uh, from the top of my head. I'm literally applying this process for five years now. I saw that people have a very hard time getting a job without work experience. So what I did is I created work experience. So in my mentorship program, at the end, once you finish all the apps that you have to build, and again, it's not a pitch, I'm just giving you an example of how I do this in the real world. I have created a team project which is being under development for almost a year now. And that's where my students go in and they learn skills they would learn at work and then they use the application they've been building as work experience. So that's how I solve that problem. You see, it's not rocket science and I just did a time with my niche to understand their problems and then at some point I had an idea because I had problems, you know, because problems will be the source of ideas for you. You solve the problems of your niche and then you stick with it for a very long period of time. So this is a clock. You become almost the niche, right? You try to understand their pain points. You try to understand why they're doing certain things. What are they trying to gain from being in that niche? Okay, for example, if you want to help dentists, you might want to figure out, okay, why do you want to grow a dentist, what's, what's it called, a, a dentist place? You'll figure out that the, the reason why they want to grow, grow their practice is because it's been given to them by their parents, you know, or the guy always wanted to change the way people look at dentistry, you know, because his mom had bad teeth when she was young and she was unattractive or whatever and then her his dad left her or whatever right i'm just making stuff up but all these people that are in a niche are in that niche for a specific reason and you'll figure out why they're there after you are spending a lot of time talking to them you need to be able to reach out to these people and talk to them a lot now how do you do that well, I made a video a couple of weeks ago, and I think I'm going to link it somewhere here. I'm going to do the YouTuber stuff with the cards, where I give you a strategy to go ahead and find these people and contact them. You'll contact them and then you'll interview them. You'll ask them all these questions. Why are you in the business? Why are you not making more money? How much money do you want to make? What's stopping you from getting there? And then you come in and then you solve that problem for them somehow you need to figure this out you have all the time in the world once you do this you'll be able to make cash this works in the same way if you want to get a job if you want to become a freelancer if you want to have an agency or if you want to create a SaaS, it's the same process over and over and over let's say you want to get a job right well you're going to choose a language and then you're going to specialize on front end well then you'll see what people need when it comes to hiring a good front-end developer. You figure that out, you reverse engineer it, you spend a lot of time doing it, and you get really good at it, and then you make money, okay? Let's say you wanna become a freelancer. Well, you choose a niche, let's say dentist. Then you figure out why dentists are not making money online because of their website, because of their SEO. Then you come in, you fix that, you wait a lot of time, you become really good in that period of time, then you become the niche expert. Okay, and then you make money. Let's say you make a SaaS. You create a scheduling software for dentists. Okay, because you realize that dentists need a specific thing to be able to book in people and make sure that people are showing up to, the, to their appointment, right? Because you might realize from your research that a lot of people are booking appointments, but they are not showing up. So then you'll come in and then you'll fix it. And then you'll increase the show up rate from 60% to 80%, which might mean you're bringing them another five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month just because you solved their problem in a specific way. And then you 
get really good at it, then you make more money, right? This is the process, guys. This is the process. And I just want to make you understand that this is not a get rich quick scheme. But if you do this, really, and you commit to this, you'll be making money. If you want me to help you with all this stuff, with learning code and whatnot, you have more details on my page. That's the first link in the description. You can apply for my mentorship. I don't even think we have spaces now, but you should definitely check it. If you see one free spot, I would suggest you to go for it because you might not have another opportunity for the next you know, month or so. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace out.